you're back for more sci-fi TV here on BuzzChomp. I'm Dan Salem, and we're about to dive into the 10 best sci-fi TV series of all time. Small caveat, these are shows I've watched. I'm not including anything I haven't seen. But these are the 10 best of all time. There's very little debate. This is in the order in which I rank them. I am a sucker for time travel. I am a sucker for aliens. If you combine the two together, double win. I'm Mandy. I'm Dan. Subscribe to Buzz Chomp. Woo woo. Without further ado, my favorite, the best all time sci fi TV series ever Battlestar Galactica. Some of the best sci fi series have been redone. This is one of them. This series spanned lots and lots of seasons. It completely came full circle on itself without giving too much away. The ending set the serial tone for the beginning. And the whole arc was one giant sphere of influence. Brilliant. It's about creation, about robots, about what makes you a sentient being. Not so much aliens, yet it's humans versus humans. It's Cylons versus humans, but Cylons are almost as human as humans are human. It makes you question your own existence, where we're going as humanity, where maybe we've come from. Are we Cylons? Because the Cylons evolved to a point where they were no different than humans, and then they tried to take over the humans. And so if we humans created Cylon-like humans, and then left Earth, we would be the Cylons, and we wouldn't know, we would just think we're humans. This is what makes Battlestar Galactica brilliant. This is the upper echelon in my opinion. It still holds up. The acting is incredible. Fringe is number two on my list. This was a procedural, if you can believe it. It was a sci-fi show where they came up with an ability to dive between universes and the multiverse theory. And if you go from our universe to another universe, and then the uh, scientist who came up with this invention lost his son, so went to another universe to steal his son. And then his son grew up not knowing he was stolen. And there's the parallel beings that can transverse the universes and trying to shut down the science, which allows you to transverse. And then there's the bad guy element. Because it was a procedural, every episode, they kind of traveled to a new universe to solve a problem. But then there was the overarching story. It took modern science and pseudoscience did it in a brilliant manner. Number three is Westworld. This is a TV series imagining of a movie written by Michael Crichton, who's one of the greats, greats, greats. Again, we are creating human-like robots a la Battlestar Galactica. Yet, Westworld's a theme park. And so you go in and you exploit your sins. But of course, the human-like robots gain sentient abilities and their own recognition and then revolt against their masters. It's just inevitable. What makes Westworld so good is that when you're in the park, it's hard to know who's human and who's not a host. Also, in season one, we're transversing time. So we're seeing the past and the present simultaneously and you don't know what is what until the end. It's what makes for great sci-fi. The questions, the how is this gonna play out? Who's doing what? There's no time travel in Westworld, <laughs> which is probably a good thing, except that there was the dual time element of storytelling. I love that. I love, love, love that. Another new series, number four on my list, is Counterpart. This takes the multiverse universe theory and splits it and just says, there are two. There was an experiment and our universe split into two. Just like Fringe, people get stolen. People go back and forth and hide on other sides. But in Counterpart, everyone has a counterpart. So they meet themselves. They interact with themselves. This is the ultimate question. What do you do if you meet yourself? They all started from the same point, yet that was 30 years ago. And so there's 30 years of different history. And you have two different versions of yourself as products of your environment, of products of what happened. One person has a child on one side, the other person, the child dies in childbirth on the other. J.K. Simmons was incredible in this series. It's a great, great mind bending thing. Cause again, you don't know who's from which side, who's which counterpart. And honestly, there's a management element and you don't really know who's in control until the very end. Very, very well laid out. Number five is the original Star Trek. This kind of laid the groundwork for how you can do a procedural sci-fi show. It was ahead of its time. It wasn't necessarily successful when it released, but then it blew up quickly thereafter. It, it laid the groundwork for space travel, 
what it's like to be in space and live on a spaceship. You have to interact with aliens. Eventually, it dealt with time travel elements as the show transitioned into movies. And it's so iconic. My dad loved this show that I grew up watching this because he watched all the reruns with me. Here are these things that we probably think should exist in our world. Let's put them in a show. Like teleportation, like transponders. Star Trek put it in the show way back when. It spawned too many series to count at this point. There's been so many follow-on Star Trek series. There's another one going on today on CBS All Access. Star Trek never ends. But the original Star Trek, it was quirky. It was funny. It was so far out there sci-fi, yet it was grounded in the real-life relationships of the people on the ship. Makes it so, so good. Coming at number six is another multiverse slash time travel show, Sliders. These characters slid into other universes into the past and the present. And every show they were trying to solve a problem and they, they kept sliding back and forth. There was an overarching story. It's just the brilliance of using this sci-fi concept to jump from episode to episode. It was done before, it's been done again since. And this hooks me every time because every episode can be completely different because they can go anywhere and do anything. It's really a cult classic. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Rick and Morty, yes, this is a cartoon. But the sci-fi is just so deep and so gooey. It's so funny. There's time travel in Rick and Morty. There's aliens. There's multiverse. There's literally anything and everything you can think of in this show. There's multiple Mortys, like infinite Mortys. Every little thing possible. He goes back in time to try to get a special sauce from a fast food restaurant. Like because it's his favorite, but then like he jumps over here and it ruins things. Brilliant, Rick and Morty, and it's so funny, and it's so freaking weird. It kind of set the bar, like obviously Futurama's great, but Rick and Morty is just kind of on another level of we are experiencing anything and everything through the most craziest mad scientist who's based on Doc Brown ever. Number eight is a time travel favorite of mine, Timeless. Again, a procedural. In Timeless, they time travel, to a different era every episode. The main bad guys are trying to screw up history, and so our main good guys are time traveling to stop it and save history and preserve history so that the butterfly effect doesn't completely ruin everything. Of course, no matter what they can do to stop history from being changed, something changes. Very first episode, our main characters go back and stop the bad guys, and they return to find that their sister no longer exists. Boom, right? Then there's this overarching superpower family. Just like in real life, we have the conspiracies of the Rockefellers and blah, blah, blah on down. This show has its own super family in charge and they're the ones manipulating time for their own means. Honestly, we would have no idea of knowing if this is actually happening today because if time was manipulated, we wouldn't know it. We would just know what we know. Every time these three individuals jump back in time and return to the present, Stuff had changed, but only for them, because they were the only ones aware of what it used to be. Everyone else just said, this is how it is. Look, this is what happened. It's again, a paradox, making you consider your own interpretation of what makes reality and time and history and future, because it's all linked and it can all change. And if it changed, you wouldn't know it ever changed because you didn't know what it was in the first place. Final two shows didn't last as nearly as long as they should have. Number nine is V. This is a show about aliens coming to Earth. They are the reptilian race. So were they already here or did they come to Earth? And then they were cloaking themselves as humans. So there's a lot of conspiracies about the reptilians posing as humans in our society. This show tackled it head on, yet it also had a giant spaceship land and then like it set up a healing booth for humans that needed healing, yet they weren't just healing them. They were kind of taking over and it was an invasion. And it was an invasion of these reptilians who were posing as humans, and then who's the creature, who's a human, who can you trust, how are you gonna stop them, all of this. It was really well done, the acting was great, and it just, I love that it played on a conspiracy that is so prevalent, and yet it brought it to light for us. Number 10, Falling Skies, another show that got cut short about aliens coming to Earth and invading. I love alien invasion shows, I love time travel shows, I love multiverse shows. Falling Skies was great, the acting was great. It was a family dynamic, a family trying to survive, trying to uprise against this invading alien race. Again, it didn't fully play out its story arc, but what we got was wonderful. I have a bonus show for you. This is an homage, because I'm a comedy guy. 
Time traveling bong. So time travel, check. Comedy, check. Cannabis, check. So this was a show on Comedy Central that unfortunately only went one season, but fortunately existed because it was brilliant. You smoked your bong and time traveled. So these are stoners time traveling, smoking their bong. And then of course there's the element of being chased and trying to stop the bad guys and solve the problem. And it was so wonderful, so funny, so smart, where you take something stereotypically comedic and stereotypically sci-fi and smash them together. All of these shows are worth a watch. There's a couple that I didn't mention because I haven't seen them yet, but obviously Doctor Who needs to be long on this Pantheon list. I haven't watched it, I can't speak to it, but it's definitely great, it's gone on forever. Stargate, another one, definitely great, gone on forever. Should have long on this list if I had seen it. So maybe if I expanded this to 15, I'd throw Doctor Who on there, I'd throw Stargate on there. You could probably toss Black Mirror on there. Great sci-fi makes us question ourselves, our own existence, what it means to live, and it makes us think what's possible, what was, what's coming. That's why I love these 10 shows. I'm Dan Salem, this is Buzz Chomp. Comment below, what show do you love that I left off the list? Which one's your favorite? Would you reorder these 10? I love sci-fi TV, so come back for more Buzz Chomp. Manny and I are covering the best of entertainment. Woo! Thanks for watching Buzz Chomp. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. share. Woo!